when it gets closer to praying, it either starts buffering really bad or it just quits. You know, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Oops, this chat. Uh, I'm gonna shut off the chat now. Hang on. A little break from me talking, 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 talking. It's such a disappointment, you know. I keep on speaking and I just cuts right through just so bad hang on where is this live stream going on The end in prayer. Analytics. No, I'm shutting off. I'm sorry, guys. That was a mistake. Like I said, I'm not turning on the comments. <sighs> Boom. Very disappointing. Very, very disappointing. You know, I... I've tried everything. I tried calling provider. I tried different methods. Just crazy. Anyway, where where did I leave this chat, this this live stream? We had over two thousand people, like around two thousand watching. Now it's hundred eighty. It's incredible. I swear, it's forces of evil at work. Anyway, I was talking about, I forgot, and there's no one to remind me because the comments are off. <laughs> um, Bob S. saying that <laughs> buffering started 15 minutes into the stream, right on schedule as always. I don't know what to tell you, my friends. I, I, I'm sorry, I've tried everything. I just... Before I start the stream, I literally jump on one leg. You know, I don't know what else to do. Anyway, uh, I continue. I forgot. Oh, job, 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 job. Yes. So Olya got laid off. No big deal. We do not rely on Olya's job. Um, My industry, we found our company in a very dire straits because, and not just not our company, all our competitors, all our partners, uh, infrastructure projects, they started getting frozen because no money coming from the government, no money coming from the banks. Banks are hanging on thread, many of them, and it's just not for... Uh, time for long-term projects and building a power station is a very long-term game, you know So my company started having troubles Immediately and we kind of predicted we foresaw the troubles. Okay, we started doing things like uh, getting ready people to Accept the fact that they're gonna make work less make less things like that, you know We were hit by sanctions really hard because we use AutoCAD by Autodesk. Uh, we are in contact with the Moscow office, called them up and they said, and we actually had few, uh, I think six licenses expiring March 20 and we had paid for them already. We just waiting, we were waiting for the, you know, for the, the, the March 20th to kick in. And then all of a sudden, we got a letter from Autodesk saying, hey, <laughs> we love you guys, but there's not much we can do because it's just, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, 
we can't go against our HQ, we're just quitting Russia. And that's it. And we still have a few licenses until the late of this year. What are we gonna do back like next? We don't know. The problem is uh, a few of our projects have been frozen. Revenues stopped from coming. We all of a sudden found ourselves in a dire situation. We didn't know how to um, salaries, wages, because most of our engineers are on salary, not hour by hour. And basically, uh, shareholders are paying out of their own pocket, but I don't think that that's going to last long. Uh, we are looking for new markets, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan. I am in Uzbekistan. I've been doing some business development for the company. Not huge success because, you know, you cannot enter new market just like, like this. It's a long-term game. It's a long-term work. You need to scout the location. You need to... Uh, assess the market, you're not going to do analysis, you're going to start meeting people here and so forth. This is a new country, new culture, new business. No one knows us here, you know. So anyway, that was, that was, um, that's been the situation. Um, most of our engineers right now are on three day a week work schedule. Therefore, they, their pay have been cut by 40%. And people are not happy about that, but they're happy to keep the job. So everyone's, and of course, they, they work in more than three days because the uh, job needs to get done. Uh, what else? Future of the job is still unclear. It's getting worse and worse. The industry is imploding. Our industry is imploding as well. And I made... A stream a couple days ago about it's I called it industry is imploding. Go and watch the the stream. I uh, explain in details on what's going on in many many Russian, you know, Russian industries, Russian companies. But again, situation is not looking good at all, and we don't understand. You know, the more into the future we look, the darker the situation is. Okay. This is what's happening. Well, merely everyone is trying to survive right now. That's, that's it, trying to survive. We're not talking about development, expansion, growth, forget it. Just be alive, that's it. Now, a lot of customers, our customers have been hit with sanctions uh, and a lot of partners Western companies, our ma major partner is Siemens, electric turbine manufacturer, oh, gas turbine, gas fire turbine, you know, manufacturer, left Russia. Just like that. They picked up and they said, we're not going to service Russian market anymore. Well, not service. We're not going to buy, we're not going to sell turbines anymore. And we were the ones partnered with Siemens, you know, selling their turbines. And all of a sudden we lost our Competitive advantage, our partner, our very close partner, okay? And they're saying we're still doing service, but not for long, you know, for some time, and we're going to be out of Russia. This is huge. Uh, companies like Andritz, European company again, um, gone, our partner. Hatch is one of our clients. Uh, huge. They just announced that they're gone from Russia. Hatch is a Canadian engineering company, in case you didn't know. Um, it, we've been partners with them since like 2004. We know them quite well. They have uh, an enterprise in St. Petersburg, bunch of engineers, and they were as, the, executing under contract. They're executing a design of a huge, um, well, manufacturing facility in the far north of Russia. No more. Okay. And they subcontracted some work to us, and then we just we lost them. We lost the work, okay? So it's pretty, pretty bad. Uh, Job-wise, things are not looking good. Um, and they're not getting any good, any better. It's not like a usual recession for you. It's, it's us against the world, okay? The world is deliberately trying to make Russian economy worse. And again, I'm not complaining. 
I'm not whining. I know why. I understand the reasons very well. And I'm merely telling you, informing you how it is in Russia these days, okay? Now, for the past hour, I have been telling you about the material part of the sanctions, how what, what's happened in my life, like what kind of inconveniences, what kind of challenges, what kind of difficulties, financial, you know, um, um, well, mostly financial, and then um, the foods, products, uh, financial services, bank transfers, and things like that. But guess what? Without these things, we're still alive. We are, well, I can't say that well, but we're still, we're still breathing, we're still living, we're still laughing, we're still, we're still here in Russia. Uh, it's, not, it's not the material things that I'm really concerned about. Material things, guess what? Russians already have found many uh, 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 ways to cut corners, so to speak. A lot of Russians just fly for one day, open account in Uzbekistan, bank account, get Visa MasterCard, works around the world, deposit here a thousand bucks, pay for the services, you know, it works, okay? Um, a, lot of, a lot of Russians are setting up their um, accounts if they receive money in other countries with friends, with relatives, and then somehow they get, uh, they fly to other countries, withdraw cash, bring cash to Russia. So, so to speak, these things have made our lives much worse much more challenging, but they haven't killed us. Now, there is another part, and it's not visible. And that part, part is a tragedy, a real tragedy, and that's, to me, it's the most important part. It's what's inside, not what's, out, not what's outside, okay? What's inside, at least I'm talking about myself, and more or less for my family, but myself. What's inside has changed so much more than what's outside around me. What's inside is... How do I say that? It's... It's bleeding. It's painful. It's... It has... Um, you know, it thinks all the time about the Ukrainians and what's happening in Ukraine. I have tons of, my mom was half Ukrainian. I have tons of friends in Ukraine. I'm tied with the country very much. And I'm looking at this good country of what's happening to it. And I understand that my country, my country is conducting a military operation in that country. And I mean, what can I say? <laughs> This is, at first I was going crazy, okay, because my brain was just refusing to process this information. Now, like I said, my heart is still bleeding, but it's more of a dull pain rather than sharp pain, because before it was very sharp, sharp pain, literally, it was, it was a sharp freaking pain in my heart, okay. Now it's not as sharp, it's dull. I'm kind of getting used to this, uh, these tragical events. But this dull pain is there. It's affecting my entire being. You know, it's affecting my head, affecting my body, affecting my mood, my emotions, my, my um, feelings. And it's affecting not to the good, okay? It's making me a completely different person, less happy, less joyous, less cheerful. It's affecting my kids. I see same kind of um, changes that I am going through and I have been going through. It's affecting my five-year-old son very much. You see, he has mental connection, not mental, but like soul connection to me and Natasha. And once we start worrying about something and he's even in another room, he feels it. Okay, he runs to us and it's like, mommy, daddy, what's going on? Why, why are you so sad? And it's terrible, okay? What do I have, like, what do I tell Michael? After a while, we made a decision with Natasha not to speak about anything bad with the presence of kids around, you know? 
it's um, it's what's inside that I'm really really scared the most because I've never felt this thing before I've never gone through such tragic events the most tragic events in my life were uh, my divorce uh, my first wife and you know we divorced <laughs> People ask me tons of questions. What happened to your first wife? Well, you know what? She's alive. <laughs> She's very well. We're friends. She lives in Maine. Uh, she lived with me for a couple of years in Russia. We divorced. And guess what? Life happened to us. It happens. People get divorced, okay? We're still friends. We're raising kids, you know. But um, what can I say? That was a tragedy for me. Uh, it affected four years years and years uh, nine months I was in complete depression I was a really dark state of mind and then I started getting better uh, but I recovered I recovered and the thing is it only concerned me me and my ex-wife then the second tragic event was the passing away of my my, my dad on the 27th of May there will be one year anniversary and it was, it was huge. It was. It's still, it's still a tragedy. It's still my heart's still bleeding when I remember about that. But I understand it was inevitable because children bury their parents. That's the way life should be, not vice versa. <laughs> I didn't want to my dad to bury me. Okay, it's much better if I bury him because he would die if he was burying me. Okay. So I would rather go through this pain than him, if you know what I mean. It's natural way of life. I understand. And it still hurts, but I understand that, you know, this is just life. But this event, why did it happen? Why? I'm still looking for a, a, a reason that the Russian government needs to answer, to give me. Why the heck this ha thing happened? At first they said denazify, demilitarize, and then they gonna forgot about this. No one talks about denazifying anymore. So why the hell did we go to our neighboring country where our brothers and sisters, and they were brothers and sisters some time ago, lived? They're not brothers and sisters. They don't consider us brothers and sisters anymore, okay? But they were. So why? Totally useless and avoidable. And this has been changing me inside. It has been giving me guilt. It has been giving me, well, it has given me guilt. It kind of, I feel like this, the longer we go through this thing, the more of an indelible mark on my head, on my forehead right here. And I, oh, I have quite a few friends from Ukraine, some of them they live in Ukraine, some of them in London, in, in the UK, some of them in in the USA, and every single friend from Ukraine, the first thing that I talk to them after this beginning of this operation event, I ask for forgiveness, and every single friend of Ukrainian descent or Ukrainian forgave me, okay, me personally, and that's very important for me. Uh, but this entire country, will 40 million people forgive us? <laughs> I don't think so. And you know what? That's a pretty heavy feeling. Knowing that your country, your country, my country, you know, is conducting something in another country that I consider very close. <sighs> very, very tough. Very, very devastating. So... Um, this second part, hidden part, okay, well hidden, what's inside of me, inside of my heart, that's been, that's been affected very much. And <clears throat> you know what? The first hour, I was talking about material things. Car manufacturers, you know, fast food chains, banks, you know, this monetary things and things like that. First of all, it's not going to break us. It's going to make our lives much more miserable, much more difficult. It's not going to break us. And the thing is, all those things can be brought back, okay? Um, overnight or over time, over a long time. But 
it's you can undo this damage by saying okay hey we are worthy of doing business again in if western companies will say okay we forgive you then everything's going to back to normal i don't think it's going back to normal soon okay but it's possible it's possible to undo this but what's inside you cannot undo that you cannot undo that understand this that it's been done people died in ukraine how can you undo that russian soldiers died how can you undo that go and tell talk to their parents what do they think how do they feel okay ukrainian soldiers died for what for uh giving a pledge to ukraine to protect it if something happens like every soldier gives a pledge gives a promise before he becomes a soldier right ukrainian soldiers did also and then what did they die for were they all nazis what if there's some of them i'm just saying you know something for russian government to consider i mean i know how the true things are but the russian government what if the some of the soldiers of ukrainian army weren't nazis huh so these things they cannot be undone and right here the biggest and hardest change that is taking place and uh you know i'm pretty strong man uh, i've never considered myself uh prone to hysteria and prone to freaking out and things like that but i feel that something right here is changing and it's not changing for the better it's not changing for you know for the light it's changing for the dark it's guilt it's 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 fear it's i don't know it's to just hellish cocktail of bad emotions and i can't get rid of it uh moscow was a pressure cooker and you know what <clears throat> in moscow i was i was um what did i i was feeling pretty bad um i was how do i say that i was um well i was feeling terrible okay but i felt lots of pressure like all around me i would go outside of my apartment in those pressure everywhere this threat this like heavy feelings everyone was having around me and it was really hard very challenging i came to tashkent uzbekistan things are different everyone's smiling they don't care what's going on in other countries they care about uzbekistan business as usual life normal everything's good and it's therapeutic it's spring everything is so perfect here you know and a lot of a lot of weight got off my shoulders but despite that things are so different despite this is not a pressure cooker but a very therapeutic environment right here inside it's not being healed it's not changing for the better it's still it's still in russia it has connection to my homeland you know and it still has guilt and it still has all these bad emotions the weight is off my shoulders so to speak because uzbekistan helped to unlift the weight you know but my heart and my soul they're still they're still affected anyway this has been my message uh again no live stream no no chats today um no comments nothing like that i just wanted to deliver the message and it's quite a long message you know there's no way i would be able to speak of this in 30 minutes so um i'm glad i'm glad i kind of unloaded how i feel a little bit so you understand where i'm coming from and i'm doing this live streams every single night for you but also for myself because it's it gives me understanding that i'm doing something that i'm spreading my word my message my 
pledge into the world and uh, it's affecting some people. If I wasn't doing that, my friends, I would I would feel so much worse, okay? And I think that a lot of Russians are not feeling dandy. Even those, the ones who support this operation, this event, they're feeling really, really bad, you know? And I just can't even imagine the darkness inside of them. This is so sad. Anyway, so I'm doing it for myself, I'm doing it for you, and I'm doing it for my kids. Thanks for writing good comments in other videos. I deliberately turned off all the comments after the stream streams here on daily streams because it's just too much, too many like hate comments coming. I don't understand why people pick me as a goal, a purpose of target for the bad comments as if I was a government official <coughs> making decisions to go to Ukraine, you know. I'm doing the very very opposite and still I get my share of <laughs> that stuff. <laughs> my mods by the way too. Uh you know not just me getting hate mail, hate comments. My moderators they're doing such a wonderful job. They're trying to keep me safe. They're just we work as a team and yet people lash at them and comment on them that's nasty things. I don't understand why. It just sounds crazy. Anyway, thank you for liking my video, my my live stream. Unfortunately, this is the second part. I'm gonna most likely delete this part because this I will see. Um, but thanks for liking and thanks for coming back and thanks for watching the rest of the stream. I wish I knew how to uh, join the streams to back together. There's supposed to be one stream, but hey. As usual, I would like to invite you to pray with me. I would like to pray a little different today, because every single day I pray for one thing. Well, a few, a few things, same things, but this is going to be a little different. This is going to be... Um, I hope you like it, and I hope you join me, and please... If you're a believer and if you're a non-believer, because to me, there are no believers and no non-believers in this stream. There are no Democrats, there are no Republicans, there are no black or white, Russians, Ukrainians, you know, Americans. Uh, as long as you have heart that's beating, you are a human being. And as long as you have a heart that's beating, it means you have some love inside of your heart. And it makes you the same as I am and same as everyone else here, okay? So we're really absolutely the same. And if we can, if we're say, some of us say, oh, I'm not a believer, that's fine. Don't believe, no one's forcing you. But you have God in your heart because you have love in your heart. and. Uh, to non-believers, I, I have I get quite a few messages in the mail, and I can say this: if you don't want to pray, if you don't want to be religious, hey, just pray for love, good wishes to everyone, and send good words, good energy to all the people that we're praying for. That's all. That's the same thing what we're doing basically. That's what the prayer is all about. Is all about. So, please, believers, non-believers. Uh, everyone who's in this live stream, please join me in prayer. First, it's going to be prayer, and then it's going to be a list of names. Um, that's changed a little bit, uh, it increased. A few people emailed me asking to add relatives of theirs. Brian Vietti asked me for his mom, and then. This list is growing, which is pretty cool, you know. I enjoy I enjoy um, putting people here and asking for, for people, and I hope that they will get help that they need. Okay, so please join me. Dear God, thank you so much for putting food on our tables. Thank you for putting roofs over our heads. Surrounding us with great people, loved people, family, friends, children, grandchildren, parents, and 
colleagues, friends, you know, just everyone who we like and love and enjoy being with. This is really a blessing. Thank you so much. I would like to ask to stop bloodshed in Ukraine. I would like to ask to help every single person affected by this bloodshed. Ukrainian or not, all of them. Um, I also would like to ask for people who have fled Ukraine and they are in, not in their country anymore and they're trying to settle. Each one of these people needs your help. Please help every single refugee. Also, please, people who are helping on the other side, on the receiving side, please help the hosts, uh, the uh, relief givers, coordinators, uh, people who provide financial needs. Please help them too. I would like to ask for all refugees, for real refugees who flee their countries due to the fear of for their lives uh, please help them find new homes and make them good members of new communities i would like to ask for people in need of healing and for people whose relatives are in need of healing especially um, for the parents whose kids are in need of healing and for the you know ch uh, children whose parents are in need of healing a lot of people are sick and this is the worst thing can happen when your child is sick and life literally ends right there and you don't know what to do your entire world becomes non-important and you just think about one thing you want your kid back healthy and please Heal every single person who is sick. Um, heal children. Help their parents. Give them strength. Vice versa. If it's children and their parents are sick, please help them and give their children strength. <sighs> please help everyone who is praying with me in this live stream or watching us or will be praying with us when uh, the stream is replayed or will be watching merely watching us please help these people please uh, answer your prayer uh, their prayers and grant their wishes thank you so much dear god amen uh, i also would like to mention a few people who are in my notebook these people, their names were given me by uh, different members of our community. And each one of these people somehow needs help. And I would like to ask you for this help. The people are Shay, Rafaela Fromm, and daughter Anna. William Schaffner, Elena, Michael, Jake, Olya, Dasha, Sky, Natasha, Rebecca Witzman, Melissa Defoe, Sabuanki, Bas Simon. And Mary B, John Paul, uh, his kids really needs to go home. His family is waiting for him, expecting, loving him, and wants wants him home. Paula McDonald, Jane Hancock, who sometimes is having hard times, but she's part of our community, you know, and uh, we we're giving her strength, strength. Um, Michael Milkevich, mom, who is in the hospital. Um, Brian Vietti's mom, her name is Carol Vietti. She had a heart surgery and recovering, and she needs your help, and she needs our help too, our prayers. Um, Marlene's family in Kemerova, Michael's family, Mikhail's family, um, Demetrius and Kieran. And Muddy and Sharon, please help these people. And I would like to thank you for helping Sharon and Kyle and his wife 
and Becky Reed's 15-month granddaughter who was in emergency with COVID. Thank you for sending them healing. Thank you for bringing them back to their homes and to their families and loved ones. Thank you, dear God. Amen. I think it's been a pretty good stream. Um, aside from the fact that it just cut me off in half, and now it's buffering in the prayer. Oh, uh, man. Hopefully it's not buffering that bad. I will turn on comments as usual after 30 minutes tomorrow's stream. Um, it's going to be an interesting topic. Please tune in. And I would like to tell you that you're absolutely awesome in your rock. Thank you for joining today. Thank you for being with me. And I will see you all tomorrow. At least I hope to see you tomorrow. That's it for today.